Got it. And and just to just so just to get an overview of what joyfully is, because this is the mm -hmm. main topic of of today. Um, tell tell us about what what is your journey towards giving a shit about mental health? Because <laughs> not everyone does, right? You yeah. see people who only care about their bodies. You see people who only care about money yeah. or people who only care about getting laid, right? It, it, there's a lot of different, uh, and I've been in all of these different, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, buckets in my life. And so um, what sort of pushed you towards saying, you know what, I'm going to spend the rest of my life helping people solve their mental issues? Wow. Um, a lot. Yeah, a lot there, man. So... I would say it's definitely happened in stages for me, but the fact of the matter is, and just to, to, to even be quick to answer this one, I didn't care about mental health. My I didn't care about my own mental health until I realized that I was in the middle of a mental health crisis of my own. Um, so when I was, you know, 25, you know, I know we, we talk a lot about our, our uh, affinity for New York City, um, you know, my first job out of college and, and for the first six years of my working life, I lived in New York City. And for my first few years there, I was, you know, working in the good job, right, uh, at Bloomberg, major company in their headquarters, had like a, you know, it was a competitive job, competitive industry, competitive city. And, you know, I also had my own personal issues that I had I'd been dealing with. You know, I had a friend in New Jersey who had been murdered uh, around this time in my early 20s. Um, I had, you know, other loss in my family and it was just a lot of things happening at once. And I also was dealing with this imposter syndrome, believe it or not, um, you know, not feeling like I really belonged in this environment. And then there were a lot of folks that worked at that company that were quick to tell me, Hey, you don't belong here. <laughs> you know, these are my colleagues who are basically trying to psych me out or something. And, you know, they're, uh, making it known through their actions and maybe just through their callous way of speaking to folks that, uh, they didn't think, you know you fit in or something like this. So, um, yeah, I, through all these things kind of happening at the same time and just years of not even knowing what mental health was or, uh, uh what it was for me, it, it ultimately led with me needing to take a step back because I was starting to notice, uh, some, some things were happening, some changes were happening in my body. I was starting to have like a physical reaction, um, uh, to certain situations, whereas, you know, it really, could have been just as simple as being able to take a step back, taking a deep breath and, you know, decompressing. But I didn't know about those types of things like mindfulness at the time. So um, to avoid myself from having like a, a nervous breakdown or something like this, I, I decided to take a sabbatical from work for about seven weeks. I went down to Miami, Florida, spent time with my grandparents at the time. And uh, that was, uh, I would say, Farhan, the, the, the smartest decision that I made um, maybe one of the smartest decisions I've ever made. Um, but certainly up until that point in my life, it was the smartest decision I'd made because I realized that I can't be my best self or provide for my family or be successful or make all these things happen unless I'm really taking care of myself first. Um, and for me, that meant, that meant, you know, embracing my mental health and uh, taking a step back, decompressing, coming back and being better than ever. This is huge, bro. Uh, yesterday, one of our friends, Mai, she's also at Digital Jungle. I don't know if you remember her. She always sat next to me, to my right. Uh, oh, Mai, she, yeah, Like course. long hair. Of course. You know Mai, yeah. yeah. Maite, yeah. Maite. Mm -hmm. So Maite is from New York, uh, from uh, Mexico City. Mm. And she is in Mexico City today. She went for oh. 10 days. Cool. And the reason she went, and it was very, really interesting, because when I asked her, why are you going? She's like, oh, uh, uh, we, I'm going as Patch Adams. And I was like, what? Hmm. I mean, I've seen the movie, but what are you talking about? So apparently her family has this thing called a Patch Adams um, uh, person, like a Patch Adams. And what hmm. that means is uh, taking care of someone medically just by being there, hmm. like loving them, right? Wow. And like Patch Adams did. So hmm. she's like, look, you know, my, my, uh, her, it's her mother-in-law is, is not feeling well. And she said, it's not something serious, but it's serious enough for me to go and be a Patch Adams for her. Mm. And they saw Patch Adams. It's, it's the movie with Robin Williams. I don't know if you've seen it, but God. he's like a doctor and he's like, at the end, he's like, shows his, his butt, you know, in scrubs, like he like <laughs> moons the whole faculty. It's so funny. But his thesis was, 
um, to cure a person, you have to give them love and affection and bond with them. And this is essentially, I mean, you you know, obviously way better, but this is essentially what, if, if we're facing a mental health crisis, then this may be a part of it. So yeah. my, my next question is, you know, looking at what, what Mai is doing and also mm -hmm. what you're doing, mm -hmm. and, and obviously what you did in Miami when you went with your grandparents, yeah. uh, what is the what is the contribution of love and friendship and social connection in mental health? Yeah, I love that question. Um, so essentially what I came to realize, one of the big um, you know, insights that, that I had early on when it came to coming up with this idea, um, and of course I built a team where, you know, my head of operations is, is a licensed therapist. So she's trained, uh, you know, master's degree in social work, top for class and all that good stuff. Uh, another uh, collaborator we have, one of our advisors, she's a licensed therapist as well, PhD, you know, went to Spelman, has been working in psychology for over 10 years at this point. Um, so I, I verify these things with them and, and, and talk through these things. It's the concept that, you know, loneliness, social isolation, uh, just kind of being separate uh, from, from, from folks who understand you, from folks who care to understand you, um, that actually has been found in numerous studies to be a precursor to depression, anxiety, and even issues like heart disease and, and lower life expectancy. Uh, there, there's a statistic uh, 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 or even a quote that was said from uh, a doctor from Cigna, if I'm not mistaken, who said that uh, loneliness is as dangerous as smoking 15 cigarettes a day on your physical health, right? So we, we all know that there is this uh, mental and physical connection um, uh, in general, but to hear it kind of said in, in that clear of a way um, kind of makes, makes the point even clearer. So when it comes to what we do with Join Joyfully, uh, whereas we connect uplifters to to folks who are dealing with things like a breakup or doubting themselves, or you know maybe at work things aren't going the way they would like to, what we are able to do is to give them an empathetic ear and someone to give them words of encouragement that are tailored to what that person's actual experience is, which helps them uh, to kind of hopefully preempt um, some of those issues that will take place longer down the, the timeline if you continue to not pay attention to to your mental health and to what it is that you're dealing with. Um, so th that's the connection we found in, in the way that we help. Good, good. Reminds me of that time when I was doing the push-ups outside Digital Jungle oh, and yeah. you joined me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, it's a good stress reliever, the yeah. 100 push-ups <laughs> challenge. Oh, boy. Oh, man. boy, man. Um, I want to ask you, Mark, about the difference if any, between someone who, imagine you were to do a physical health, body health app, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of a mental health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, might, you, you could have diet or, or exercise or so on and so forth, but mental health and, and, and physical health, they're so related. I mean, oh, yeah. body, mind is like, I mean, it's so related. Absolutely. So how do you, how do you balance your own physical health because i i'm assuming that the mental health side is is obviously no, no none of us have it figured out but no. talking with people uh d discussing things with experts reading mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and watching and 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 obviously you have people on your team that are licensed you mm -hmm. may have this perspective of mental health mm -hmm. but then is there any little niche here or aspect of physical health that you must touch upon because i would i would guarantee or, or, or really really believe that if someone does not have the right nutrition does not have the right sleeping habits does not have the right uh exercise route and or just some exercise for god's yeah. sake right yeah. it would be kind of difficult to have a good you know good mental health mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah, absolutely so Sorry. how do you, how is there a balance because if if you focus on this word mental health mm -hmm. for join joyfully mm -hmm. then someone may get the the idea that oh oh okay mental health I, I love mental health but then this person may not be fit or healthy at all physically yeah. yeah so how do you balance that how do you 
align that. Yeah. Um, so in the app, one of the things that we definitely have as, as one of the, the topics that uplifters are open to speaking about and also that users can filter down and speak about is definitely health and wellness uh, and like nutrition, you know, dieting, you know, th that type of thing is, is definitely something that is in, in the app that users can speak about. But, you know, we, we can definitely do more in that regard. Um, there's, there's, there's definitely more that we can do there. Uh, but for me personally, uh, because I think this is more of a question about me, me personally, um, I'm, I'm doing the 75 hard thing. I, I think you're probably familiar with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I know you're, I know you'd be familiar with that. You're, you're one person. I was like, I don't have to explain the far on what 75 hard is. <laughs> Whereas I have to explain to a lot of other people what it is, but, um, yeah, man, I, I've been doing that. I'm actually, dude, I'm actually done on Friday. So two days from now, we 75 days. Um, and I started on January 1st. So the, um, for me, I'm, I'm always trying to, to find better ways because of that mind body connection that I realized when I was dealing with my own mental health struggles. Uh, I've, I've been very intentional with trying to, um, prioritize physical health. Um, because look, man, like, you know, we're, we're in this culture in this world where, you know, we, we have to, we gotta, we gotta make things happen, right? We gotta, we got to make money. We got to you know, be productive. And a lot of the times, <laughs> dude, a big epiphany I had when I was living in, when I was working in New York is like, dude, you know, you have, you know, business, you have, you know, work, you know, business or whatever, you have fitness, you have like, you know, family, uh, you know, relationships, et cetera. Right. There's, there's like five different categories. I think that, that, uh, are most important in most people's lives. Um, but you can really only prioritize like one or two of them, right, on a given day, uh, at least in, in my experience, right? Maybe other people have figured out some optimal way of addressing all of these things. But, you know, it's like the five F's, F's right? It's like family, faith, friends, fun, and uh, fitness. I might have missed, or in finances, uh, might, have, might have got that mixed up a little bit. But point being, um, you know, fitness is something that I've noticed for myself has definitely uh, uh, kind of taken a backseat sometimes. And so doing things like 75 hard where you have to work out, you know, twice a day, you have to eat healthy and everything like that, man, like um, that, that type of discipline and that kind of like regiment has been for me, what's been useful for me being in now, what is the best shape of my life, man. I might be able to have uh, kept up with you on that push-up challenge. Uh, if we could, uh, if we can go you look back. good, man. No, you look you, good. Man. We thank will very too. soon uh, do that again when you come to Tulum or when I come to Mexico City. Hey, yeah. More than welcome, bro. Love to.